What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day. I'm here back at the Red Brick House. Um, we've got some more flooding from the storms that are, you know, the, the remnants of the hurricane uh, that came through. And we've got some stuff we need. We got some cleaning up to do uh, down here and things. So I'm back down here to take care of that. But I have to say, da da dun, da da dun. Damn, Gina, thank you for uh, updating me. Uh, this came across from Todd Archer about an hour ago. I was on the road, so I didn't see that because it was kind of like a white knuckle with all of the road fog that's coming off and things. But Micah Parsons is wearing a boot. And using a scooter to protect his high ankle sprain, while he did not completely rule himself out of Sunday's game at Pittsburgh, he acknowledges he may be out through the bye week. I feel like I'm letting people down, Parsons said. So that's, um, you know, that's what we got as far as Micah goes. He doesn't want to miss time out there. But there has been... Um, I don't want to trash Micah Parsons because you have a guy who ultimately wants to win at anything he wants, at, at anything, okay? Be it sumo wrestling, be it playing spades or chess or football. He wants to win. Now, wanting to win and being a leader are two different things. Not everybody necessarily knows right off the bat how to lead people. Sometimes people can be, yeah, I mean, there's, there's certain ways of leading. There's one thing of being able to talk to your teammates and pump it up. When I saw Micah Parsons um, in training camp, okay, training camp, after practice, running extra sprints with Mozzie, that's leadership. That's leadership. That's recognizing that I need my guys to be able to step up and play well, and it's up to me to help bring them along by helping them, by teaching them. That's leadership. Throwing them under the bus, per se, may not necessarily be the right thing to do. There seems to be, and maybe I'm wrong, Micah has a way of kind of putting it out there and just putting foots and asses. And sometimes some of the things are better left said between each other in the locker room as opposed to the media. And so Micah has thrown some people under the bus. Micah's been thrown under the bus by Malik Hooker. Now, a person who is in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, a place that Micah Parsons wants to be, and I want to say that Micah Parsons is having a rougher year this year in the transition with Mike Zimmer, and it may not all be the transition to Mike Zimmer. Some of it may be where teams realize and study what you do and end up finding ways to counter it, okay? So they're clearly, Micah wants to have an incredible season so he can get paid, and he wants to have an incredible season so he can get to the Super Bowl. So we know the desire is there. Doing those things and how you get there are, is a totally different thing. Now, DeMarcus Ware kind of went through and threw him a little bit under the bus here. And I want to play this clip for you guys to hear. The finger at your other teammates, that sort of makes things a little bit different when it comes to are you the true leader that you know you need to be? Um, uh, to me, true leaders don't point fingers. They just show results, and then everybody follows. Um, I think it wasn't the right thing to do, um, but, you know, things have changed. And to Micah that's listening, you know, one thing that, you know, I can sit right here and tell him is, you know, never point a finger when you have the C on your, tech, on your chest. Uh, what you do is show it from the results that, you know, on the football field, rushing the pass or making big plays, and everybody else follows after. Yeah, so that's um, pretty interesting to hear um, DeMarcus Ware kind of put it in there. And that kind of puts it in, in perspective of how he should be dealing with other players. 
you know, not everybody on that team is going to be as good as Micah Parsons. And to expect them to be as good as he is, is not going to happen. But in the same sense, you can't do this alone. You know, I remember, and I'm not going to use the player's name, and it's funny, I should have, um, <laughs> I should have asked, I talked, in fact, I will. I'm going to call my buddy James Franklin because I saw him uh, this weekend. He was our, the, the left tackle. I was the left guard. So we were side by side, and our high school football coach, Mike, was our running back. But our senior year and the last game of the season, um, our quarterback was a junior. And he was a little bit arrogant. You know, he would always just kind of throw shade at his offensive lineman and kind of treated us like shit. And that last game of the year, we ended up doing the lookout block. And the lookout block is we, all of us offensive linemen, we, we, we planned this out. And we said, you know what? When we call a lookout block, we all going to do this. And what we did was we ended up when the ball was snapped, turned around and said, look out. You just let your guy go through. And let him get cleaned up. And he did. He got his bell rung. Probably got a concussion that day. But that was because he was an asshole. You know, we blocked for him every other game. But since this is the last game of the year, we're going to get some payback. And that's what Micah Parsons has to realize. Sometimes you have to yell at people to get a result. Sometimes you got to hug them and support them and things. But putting them on blast to the media... That ain't the way to do it. And and I'm going to say Jerry Jones could learn some of that lesson too because, you know, Jerry Jones with the whole uh, holding everything with the Green Bay Packers uh, thing and putting it out there, well, you know, I haven't done a contract for Mike McCarthy because, you know, I still, Green Bay. Uh, you know, it's, you know we get it. You, you're not happy about what happened. None of us are. But to constantly put people on blast, and thinking that that's going to get a better result, what Micah Parsons is doing, blasting, blasting his safety, isn't going to help. Now, what's going to be interesting is, is um, I remember last week after we lost uh, to Baltimore, I remember getting uh, about 4.45, wanting to see Micah Parsons' podcast um, and seeing what he had to say and being there and going and doing it live for hours um and he didn't show up until way later it was actually released um it was released later on and so on but you know micah has some growing to do now he's wanting to play and he's like if i can play i will play and um it might not be it might not be the worst thing in the world for him to have to sit for a game or two to come back down to earth so we'll see if he ends up playing um you know being in a walking boot on monday is not speaking well for being able to play this weekend and i would rather him um be 100 percent or or at least closer to 100 percent than being out there you know limping around that's just me so we'll see where it goes and we know that d law is headed to ir so there's that as well um definitely not news you want to have before you go through and play the steelers but it is what it is all right good people I will see you guys real soon. We'll be doing a live stream, of course, tonight for the Monday Night Football games. And uh, we'll see you there. Peace.